Welcome. My name is Shira Goodman, and I am Chair of Combined Jewish Philanthropies, or CJP, as we all lovingly call it. Tonight, I am co-hosting with Rebecca Speicher, who is Chair of our Israel and Global Jury Leadership Development Committee, as well as a very familiar face to many of us, Lino Kovarobius, the CEO of JFS of Metro West. So we are here actually live and in person. And uh, you'll be seeing us pop up from time to time on the video and be asking you to chat and other such things. So to get us started, why don't you put into chat where you are right now and perhaps what was your first connection with the Boston Jewish community, okay? So while they're doing that, Rebecca, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Speicher. I am the chair of the Boston Haifa Connection Young Leadership Committee. Um, it has been my honor to volunteer with CJP for many years. Uh, I've engaged young adults through the LEADS program and learned about philanthropy through the Chai Society. But my most recent uh, volunteerism with CJP was through the Boston Haifa Connection in Haifa. Uh, I had the benefit of living in Haifa and being a part of the Boston Jewish community while I was there. During the pandemic, I'm not really sure what I would have done without CJP and the Jewish community. I'm really happy to be home and continuing the work that we do together, but it was really exciting to see everything that we do in Israel firsthand. Lino? Great, thank you, Becca. And we have just a quick thing from the chat. Somerville, Needham, Marblehead, Providence, Providence Rhode Island, Cam Go David. Kibben, <laughs> Shalom from Sharon, Swampscott, Brookline, Medford. Awesome, keep, keep <laughs> putting in the chats. Uh, as Shira said, I'm Lino Kovarubius. I'm the CEO of Jewish Family Service, JFS. Uh, a little bit about myself, originally from uh, Southern, warm Southern California. Uh, I served in the Navy for 22 years before joining this wonderful work in the Jewish community 13 years ago. It seems like yesterday. Uh, how I got here to the Boston community, I, I married a, a Bostonian from Framingham, Massachusetts. And uh, she told me, you've got to come to this, the, the best sports town in the, in the world and the best community in the world. And it's, as always, she's always right. So it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here with Becca and, and Shira uh, tonight. And this is Roland. I saw a St. John go by very quickly. So I saw I Canada. I saw well, Canada. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, the, oh, I thought it was St. John down south where it's warm. Mm. Yeah. Who knows? I think it's, I think it's anyway, eight. where are we at, Rebecca? We, we are very lucky to be here at Congregation Kalad Israel in Brookline. Uh, we are not holograms. We are here in person. Um, K <laughs> <laughs> KI is a great uh, example of how our community continues to innovate and adapt. KI's uh, new campus is home to many partner organizations that work together to provide uh, vibrant Jewish programming and life for all of the, re the senior residents and any members of the Brookline Jewish community. So we're really lucky to be at KI tonight. Yeah, and a special thank you to my friend, the Executive Director uh, uh, Barnett Kessel. Uh, you rock, your team rocks. Thank you for hosting us here tonight. It's, uh, it's uh, really a great place to be. Yeah, and I hadn't been to KI since they did all of the development and construction, and it is a gorgeous facility and a real symbol of collaboration. It's great to be here. So um, we're really excited for this evening. We're gonna honor folks. We're gonna share what's going on at CJP. And I'll tell you that one of the perks of being CJP chair is that you get this bird's eye view of the Boston Jewish community and all the great stuff that is happening. And so tonight in the next hour, our hope is that we'll be able to share that with you. So let's get started with a video. At CJP, we believe that when you bring people together, great things happen. Over the past year, our community has shown us how resourceful and strong we can be. Together, we rushed aid to people who suddenly found themselves in need here, in Israel, and around the world. באותה תקופה, קבוצת אחריי, קבוצת אחריי של תוכנית נתיבים של שותפות חומה בוסטון, ובצורה טובה ביותר. Thank you very much, CGP. It was amazing. Providing crucial services 
to let people know they're not in it alone. I got laid off. I went on to unemployment. I got really scared. I called the warm line. So it was unbelievable. I called it my lifeline. We partnered to keep our community healthy, more secure, and connected to Jewish life. We honored those who were lost, remembering the painful lessons from the past. Every one of us needs to stand up and say, not here, not anywhere. We will not tolerate anti-Semitism, racism, or any form of hate. We created access to more resources and learn from one another. The book is about what's become of the common good. How did we arrive at this rancorous, polarized political moment? Through it all, we grew even stronger. Connection, joy, and participating in Jewish life was more important than ever. We innovated and brought more people together. My name is Adriana Katzel. I'm one of the fellows, I'm a visual artist. I'm both Latina and Jewish. And so a lot of my work has been focusing on the idea of migration, the idea of exile. My name is Yoni Batat. In this fellowship, I've been diving into my own experience as an Iraqi Jew and the fragmentation that comes with that. Our community has been there for each other rising to overcome extraordinary challenges. You've shown us what's possible when we all come together. Please stay hopeful because we have really important work to do ahead. Wow, I've seen a lot of CJP videos in my lifetime, but this one was really special. It just so showed the resilience and the beauty and the joy of our community, even during a pandemic. I have to admit, it got me a little teary, although I cry at grocery chain commercials, so don't put any measure in that. Anyway, last year, like many of you, I had more time at home. So I picked up a book by Doris Kearns Goodwin called Leadership in Turbulent Times. And in that book, she talks about the Civil War and the greatness of Abraham Lincoln. She talks about this prolonged coal strike and how it brought out the greatness in Teddy Roosevelt. She talks about the Depression and how it brought out the greatness in FDR. And she talks about the civil rights movement and how it brought out the greatness in LBJ. Each one of these leaders had to deal with political and social and economic challenges, but they all rose to the task during turbulent times. Sound familiar? As I look across the Boston Jewish community, I am so impressed by our community. Of course, our tireless volunteers, our generous donors. We would never have made it through these years without them. But tonight, I wanna to focus on our Jewish professional leaders who have really shined during this pandemic and who have led us through turbulent times. And I wanna share with you three traits that they really exhibited that I think we can all learn from. So the first was these leaders not only saw crisis, they saw opportunity and crisis. So think of our synagogues, we're here in KI. Synagogues were founded on in-person contact. You come together to pray, to learn, to eat, just to connect. All of a sudden, the doors were locked closed. So our synagogues had to pivot and innovate and they went online and they enabled all of us, again, 
to pray and learn and connect. And a wondrous thing happened. They actually expanded their reach. They found that more people were attending virtually than perhaps in person. And folks who might never have stepped in a synagogue were all of a sudden coming to synagogue. And then take our day schools. Our day schools had to rapidly pivot. They had to move to Zoom and hybrid and healthcare protocols and bringing kids back to school before we even had a vaccine. And what they found was all of a sudden, a lot of parents who had never considered day schools said, hmm, maybe I'll take a look. And a lot of new families tried out day schools and they discovered the magic and the beauty of our day schools. And now we have scores of new families in day schools. That is seeing opportunity in crisis. The second characteristic that we saw of our leaders was their ability to set aside any personal agendas and to get together for the collective good. So we saw this this last year in how we have combated anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. We all know that there's been a really concerning and scary uptick, and especially during the Hamas attack on Israel when the visceral hatred of our sacred country was just rampant. And we saw our advocacy organizations, JCRC, IAC, AJC, ADL, come together in new ways. And they mobilized us and they educated us and they supported us so that we could be strong against attacks. On a different note, we see our teens doing this. So we all know that the pandemic has been particularly hard on teens who are suffering greater levels of loneliness and depression. So we took what has been a six year program, which is the Jewish Teen Peer Initiative, and we gave it a new look and we recruited 50 teens to come together to learn to be peer friends, to reach out to others. But it wasn't just one organization that did this. Gann Academy, Bauerkrast, Hillel, CJP, and the Bamid Bar Wilderness Health Organization all came together. And on a beautiful day just two weeks ago, they were trained underneath a tent. And these 50 teens can now spread out. And if each one of them talks to five friends or 100 or 10 friends, imagine the impact they are going to have because organizations came together to do good. And then there's the third characteristic. This goes by a lot of different names. Some call it grit. Some call it tenacity. Some call it just such an undying sense of mission that nothing will get in your way. And here I think about our caring and sedic and chesed organizations, organizations like To Life and Hebrew Senior Life, JFCS, JVS, and Lino's JFCS of Metro West, how they came together and seemingly did the impossible in supporting their constituents. I'll never remember, never forget, and always remember, CEO of one of the organizations who said she wakes up every single morning with her mission in her head and in her heart to keep her residents alive. So tonight, on behalf of all of us, we thank you, our beloved Jewish professionals. Thank you for finding opportunity in crisis. Thank you for coming together for the collective good. Thank you for your grit and your tenacity. You know, this pandemic will pass, but your leadership, your vision, your emotional intelligence, your ability and desire to partner with others, that is a lasting gift to the Boston Jewish community and what makes us such a shining example. I look forward to working with you for many years to come, but hopefully in less turbulent times. And it's now my pleasure to introduce our Circle of Excellence Award winners. And as we said, we have amazing Jewish professionals, but boy, do we have amazing volunteers as well. And when the two come together, we really hum. So we have a video where each of our honorees speaks. And as you listen to them, think about how they are setting the standard for all of us 
of what real passion and thoughtfulness and deeds can do in our Jewish community. Let's roll the tape. I think that the thing that has surprised me the most is the thing that probably should surprise me the least, which is the caliber of the people, both volunteers and professionals who choose to put their time and their resources into CJP. We are such an exceptional community and the kinds of people who could put their time and their talents any place who choose to put it in CJP, you know, amaze me every single day. Volunteering is a second career. And I think I'm not alone in that, in the people who choose to make CJP a priority. The chance to work with like-minded people or not so like-minded people is just a growth opportunity for me. The chance to know that you are affecting people's lives in positive ways every single day through the smallest and the largest gestures is really, it's, it's incredibly powerful and speaks to me in a way that many other careers might not have. In 2007, I had the unique privilege of traveling with Myra Kraft and a very small group of women on a mission to Israel. It was a life-changing experience. It cemented a connection that I always knew was there and helped it grow. Six months later, uh, for my birthday, we took our kids there on their first family trip to Israel, and um, that was an amazing experience to see Israel then through their eyes. And I've been back many times since, and each time has been like the first time. I have had so many roles, from smaller ones many years ago to much larger and more impactful ones now, but each one has given me the chance to really uh, do something important and teach me as a human being um, how to do it better and how to be better. My family influences the way I give very strongly. They've been involved in CJP uh, for a number of generations. Um, actually, I was just talking to my grandmother the other day about an involvement that goes back to my great grandfather. Um, so to see the evolution of CJP over time and my family's involvement with them over time uh, is really something that I look forward to discussing with them. It feels so good to give to CJP, given that I see their annual campaign every year and what they're able to do with those resources and understanding all the partnership organizations that they're able to give to as a result of our giving as a community uh, really makes a huge difference to all the members of our community. It's absolutely wonderful being one of the co-chairs of the Young Adult Philanthropy Board. I get to see firsthand the contributions that all of the young adults are making in the community and trying to increase their engagement and with philanthropy over the years is going to be really fun for me. As a young professional, I'd like to still call myself young, starting out in Boston maybe seven or eight years ago. It was very difficult to envision how I was going to interact in my community and having an organization like CJP really anchored me and centered me and it gave me the sense of purpose and community and values that I was looking for. So being able to go on that path with CJP over the last seven or eight years has really made me who I am today and I really can't thank them enough for that. When I first started getting involved in CJP, I was a participant in the Dewey Stone Kadima Leadership Program. And I very quickly saw that not only was CJP investing in the community through these micro grants that young people were entitled to give to the community, but also that CJP was investing in the young adult population. In my current role as the co-chair of the Young Adult Philanthropy Board, I love seeing this moment where young adults get it. They get CJP, they get what CJP provides to them, you know, in terms of community and a place that feels like home in the Boston area. And then it also, you know, does so much good in the world. I think there are so many people out there like me who don't have the same privilege and background. And I think it's my responsibility to give back and make other people's lives better. Even if I can do the smallest thing to make someone else's life a little better and make their life a little easier, um, whether it's you know with my time or with my philanthropy efforts overall. When we think of what draws us together as a community, 
It's our compassion, the sense of responsibility we have, our connection and a feeling of safety. Home is where the heart is. I'm here at our CJP home. On the wall in the lobby, there's an inscription from the Torah. The walls are actually talking to us, sharing a powerful message. It's our obligation to transmit to future generations our story, the core values of justice and righteousness, of building a better world together. As I think about how much I've grown over the past 25 years, it's CJP that has given me a gift, a place where I could listen, learn, and give, a platform to engage with my community. I remember when I was first introduced to CJP, it was my in-laws, Robert and Myra Kraft, who inspired me with their leadership and passion for philanthropy in the Jewish community and beyond. They sparked my love of Israel with my first visit there when I was newly married to Danny. As a young mom, I found my place in women's philanthropy. As I got more involved, in the evenings when I'd go out, my kids would ask me, where are you going, CJP? They knew. It was important to Danny and me to teach our children about Sadaka and Tikkun Olam. In my role as WP campaign chair, this past year has shown me how much our connection to CJP and each other matters. I'm most proud of the incredible women of WP, how we support one another and our community. We need to ensure our circle of excellence keeps growing, embracing all of us our committed volunteers, donors, and professionals. There's so much more we must continue to do as a community. At CJP, we're together at home. The CJP building doors may be open or closed, but what's certain is our hearts will always be open. CJP Superstar Awards recognize volunteers who are making a positive impact in our community by raising money, engaging people, and driving innovation through CJP. Please join us in congratulating this year's superstars. Mazel Tov to all of our circle of excellence, winners, and our superstars. Our work would not be the same without your help. Uh, while we would love to celebrate with all of you in person, unfortunately that is not possible, but we can look in on them right now. They're watching with us. Uh, so please continue to give your congratulations to them in the chat. As Shira said, sorry, uh, Wendy is also unable to be with us this evening. She is in Israel and it is a little late there right now, uh, but we do send her our congratulations as well. Um, and as Shira said before, our work would not be possible without our CJP professionals. So please join me in honoring our Barry Schrag Leadership Award winners. Last year, I was deeply honored to be the inaugural recipient of the Barry Schrage Leadership Award. This year, I'm really excited to announce that Ed Quinn and Jean Lee are the award uh, recipients. And that's because so many of you, even working remotely, know how wonderful they are and all the things that they've been doing uh, behind the scenes. These are two really behind the scenes guys who have enabled all of us to be working remotely as they come into CJP and expand their role into areas of finance and check processing and a million other things. They give so much heart. They love being at CJP and they love working with all of you. And it was so marvelous for me to see that support. So rather than have me tell you how much I love them and how great they are, we've asked CJP staff to describe in one word what they think about Ed and Jean. Reliable. Remarkable. Amazing. Kind-hearted. Sweet. Welcoming. Selfless. Unwaveringly dedicated. I 
believe CJP means a lot to the community. I, you know, like over 36 years, I've seen all the different um, people we support in organizations, schools, daycare, and just knowing what we support and the people I've met through this interaction um, has been really helpful to make my job easier to understand why I have to do what I do. I'm a quiet person. I, I'm sort of reserved until I get to know people. But once I get to know you, I'm always, you know, hi, how you doing? You know, can I help you? When this all started, we decided we had to keep the mail room open. It's, you can't do mail room from home. We have started scanning mail and get, making sure the right people get it. We uh, forward the checks to the different banks and to the finance departments. It's been strange being in this building by myself because we're still delivering the mail to the floors after we scan it so the people will have the hard copies when they come back. It's been nice the last couple of months as people have started to come back to hear voices on the floors again when I'm walking around and just to be able to say hi to people again. And I always try to make people, especially the new people when they come on board, when they finally meet me or first introduce me to let them know that we in the mail room or Gene and I are always available to help them out in any way we can. Gene is a good worker and it's, it's really, we've been together 25 years actually. Gene has been here 25, 26 years, give or take. Um, and I know that if I need time off, I don't have to worry about it. Gene's always been very responsible. Ed has been a standard bearer for me, so I, I try to keep up um, my pace with him. He never gets angry. Level-headed, cool-headed. He, he's an amazing guy. CGP not only helps Jewish organization and Jewish population, but also when other populations, like for example, Haiti and earthquake and Afghanistan with refugees, they, they, CJP just unhesitantly just helps. And I was doing some thank you this morning from, from donors. I'm blessed to be a CJP. Establishing relationships with the people since I've been here all these 25 years and see people come and go. Well, just the relationship with, with CJP. This is really my my second family here. Throughout the year, CJP staff nominate their colleagues for Core Value Awards. They honor their co-workers for collaboration, caring, respect, innovation, and integrity. Please join us in congratulating the following Core Value Award winners. Big thanks to my fellow veteran, Ed and Gene. Uh, I heard a little story here in the background that when Gene found out he was getting the Barry Shrake Leadership Award, he said, no way, it belongs to Ed. Imagine the surprise when they both found out they were both getting this award. Mazel tov, well-deserved, and also congratulations to all the staff at CJP. I have the pleasure of working with them every day. I'm always amazed on the, uh, the ability for them to be resilient and also their empathy towards the clients that we serve. So, wow. Thank you. And I have to say, looking at this chat is so heartwarming. The outpouring of love and affection and appreciation um, for them is nothing short of amazing. So there's one last group that we want to thank tonight, and that is our campaign volunteers, the campaign cabinet, and of course, our campaign co-chairs, Jessica Myers and Adam Sutton. So Jessica, thankfully is going to serve her second year as campaign co-chair and we're so thrilled that she's being joined by Camp Goodman. Adam, you have now finished two years as campaign co-chair. And wow, you know, when you took on this role, it was pre-pandemic. Little did you know that a few months in, we could no longer do in-personal visits and everything would have to turn virtual. But you took that classic 
Adam Sutton, Can Do Energy, and you helped us pivot with enthusiasm and with creativity. And based under your and Jessica's leadership, as well as all the volunteers, we received over $50 million in contributions from our community for the annual campaign this year, and a higher number of donors than before. So truly remarkable during these uncertain times. So Adam, we have a special gift for you, and it's a beautiful piece of calligraphy art done by none other than our own Jill Baker. And it has a line from the Talmud, and it reads, one who performs charity and justice is considered as though he filled the world in its entirety with kindness. I can't imagine a better phrase to capture you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Jessica. And now we'll hear directly from you. I'm Adam Sutton, and I had the pleasure of co-chairing the 2021 annual campaign with Jess Myers. I'd like to first thank Sheriff Goodman for her incredible leadership with the CJP board over the last year. In thinking back to my role as campaign co-chair, I was so impressed by the CJP response to the pandemic. Staff and lay leaders quickly raised and invested new resources to assist members of our community that were most significantly impacted by the pandemic. I was also very impressed by how CJP maintained community connection despite the challenges of a completely remote workforce and the inability to hold in-person meetings. I also want to thank the volunteers and donors that have given their time and financial support to strengthen our community in a time of great uncertainty. I will now pass the floor to Jess Myers. Thank you, Adam. I am so grateful that we were able to work together for the better part of the past year. Your calm and thoughtful leadership, your rational perspective and profound understanding of the inner workings of CJP was so helpful to me as I transitioned into this position and throughout the year. As Adam rolls off of the campaign chair role, I'm very excited to welcome Camp Goodman as my partner in CJP's 2022 annual campaign co-chair. Camp is deeply committed to the Boston Jewish community, and I'm really looking forward to our work together over the coming year. I would like to say how grateful I am to be part of this community and hold this position on behalf of CJP. I love the people I connect with through this role, our generous donors, the incredible CJP staff, and the passionate volunteers in our community. As we launch the 2022 annual campaign, it is my privilege to thank all of you in advance for your gifts of time and financial resources as we work together to build a stronger and even more vibrant Boston Jewish community. Thank you, Adam, Jessica, and Camp for your leadership. We are now going to share just a few of CJP's new initiatives. Mental health needs are a crisis point nationally. Across the community, and I see it forehand, firsthand, and my social workers see this firsthand, we are hearing that access to mental health services is paramount issue organizations and community members are facing today. To help address this tremendous need, CJP is launching a collective impact initiative to address mental health model after our very successful anti-poverty initiative. Working in collaboration with multiple agencies across the community, the mental health initiative will improve access to services and build a greater sense of belonging in the Jewish community for everyone. Our community is looking at these issues holistically and across multiple access points through programs like Mental Health First Aid for educators and professionals working with teens. The creation of substance use disorder support groups grounded in a Jewish context is extremely important. And as you will see in a moment through arts therapy, supporting mental health needs for everyone is a huge issue. It is an important issue that we can only begin to address by working together. Art has a lot of power. Just engaging in art making is inherently therapeutic. I met with over 150 people throughout May and June, offering therapeutic art workshops to caregivers, teachers, parents of young children, people who senior life chaplains, all people who have been on the front lines throughout this entire pandemic. It allowed me to really jump into something fully, connected to myself through the art, but also connected with all my colleagues. That was a big part of it. 
The idea of caring for the caregiver or supporting the supporters is something that we hold very dear. We're reminding people that not only is it okay for them to replenish themselves, but it's necessary. It was such a gift for CJP to recognize the value in this work and to offer it to our community. The feedback was so great that the work is continuing into this year. We want to help as many people as possible. So the very act of making makes us slow down to engage with physical material, especially in a world that's so digital and so fast paced. This felt like such a gift to me. It felt like right at the exact time that I needed it, just to be able to get out of my head and into my hands in a really meaningful and directed way was, was very powerful. I love that novel approach to mental health, that by making and doing, it just kind of calms all of us. During COVID, I took to knitting in a crazy way. And watching that video, I now realize that it was my own making. And at the end of the day, just kind of centered me. So thank you for the folks who are bringing that program to so many across our community. The next video we're gonna see is about security, also a tough subject. And unfortunately, in today's world, if we're gonna engage Jewishly, if we're gonna have the joy, we also know that we need security. It's a sad reality. But the problem with security is that it's expensive and it's complicated, which is why it is so perfect for us to approach it with a collective mindset. In a second, you'll hear from Jeremy Yeaman as he describes this. But when we think about this program, it brings together support and training and partnership, grants from CJP, but even more getting grants from the government to the tune of millions of dollars. And all of that is so we never have to think twice about going to a Jewish organization or a Jewish event we know will be safe and secure. Jeremy. The purpose of CJP's Communal Security Initiative is to help to bring people together safely. We want to partner with institutions to help them address security needs. Security has to fit the institution. And really what you're ultimately doing is building relationships. The great relationship that we built with Jeremy and Dan through the CJP CSI training for over five years now has been incredibly helpful for our early learning centers. We've customized specific trainings based on the needs of each of those preschool sites. Excellent. On July 1st, during our summer camp program, we had the incident when the, a stranger attacked Rabbi standing next to our building. Children and parents was very scared. I was calling the ambulance to the hospital. The first thing I did is I called Jeremy and I asked him for help. And uh, uh, immediately Jeremy was in the emergency room. He knew everyone, he knew police unit, he knew FBI. So his help was amazing. It's great to have experts and to be available and help and support our school and our community. I know the only way for us to combat antisemitism is to be strong and to be safe. A lot of security is a balancing act and historically either you were open and welcoming or you were safe and secure. We need to be both. We truly hope that the, through our work with the communal security initiative, our community will continue to be warm, welcoming, safe, and secure, as Jeremy said. In August, many of us were riveted by the news of many Afghan families and individuals fleeing their country and making a new life in the United States. On August 24th, we launched the Fund for Afghan Immigrants and Refugees, our FAIR Fund. 100% of every donation supports Catholic charities and Jewish vocational service as they help provide housing, food, clothing, employment assistance, and other necessities. Boston's interfaith communities have a long history of coming together and we are proud to partner with them once again. In some good news, this past Friday, the first Afghan family was settled in the Boston area. JFS of Metro West with Lino uh, and Temple Beth Elohim of Wellesley worked together to settle a young family, uh, two young adults with their three-year-old and three-week-old baby, who is actually a United States citizen. They were born on a, on a military base. Yeah. 
Um, this family has no connections to the area, but we are making sure that they have what they need in order to be settled in the United States and safe. So in this next video, we will hear from our partner organizations more about this initiative. We are so blessed and fortunate for the help of Combined Jewish Philanthropies and all of your amazing donors and supporters. With the establishment of the FAIR Fund, it is allowing us to provide a robust welcome and resettlement for the Afghan refugees fleeing for their lives. We're going to be able to welcome more than 100 individuals, 20, 25 families. We pick up that family, we put them into an apartment that's been furnished and has a hot meal ready for them, and then we start services. English language classes, to employment services, enrolling kids in school, ensuring people have their health care needs met. We greet people at their most vulnerable and we say we're going to help you rebuild that life that has been taken from you. I came from the Soviet Union in the early 90s and the Jewish community in Massachusetts was extremely welcoming and supported us in those early days and so obviously it was a cause that hit close to home for us and we felt like we had to do something. We really wanted to do this in a Jewish capacity. Giving is something that is important to us and giving through the FAIR Fund allowed us to consolidate our donations in a way that could make a greater impact. As Jews, we have a social responsibility to be part of this community and to give. As young Jews, I think it's even more important to become active in your community and do this type of work. Being able to do this work in an interfaith capacity with our amazing partners at CJP, JVS, and JCRC, it has really renewed my sense of belief in the common good. It speaks volumes to CJP's ability to provide our community an opportunity to make an impact in things that matter. And I think that's what sets CJP apart. And it's something that we really want to help champion. And now, Rabbi Mark Baker, President and CEO of Combined Jewish Philanthropies. This past June, I was taking a walk with a friend near my home when my phone rang. A rabbi was stabbed in Brighton, less than two miles from where I was standing. I feared for the life of the rabbi. I wondered whether more attacks might be coming. I thought about the fact that I and my children wear a kippah and walk down the street as visibly identified Jews. Our community security team and the Boston police mobilized immediately. Thanks to your support, as you've heard tonight, we've built a best-in-class community security initiative, and we will keep working tirelessly to make sure that our community is safe. Thank God, Rabbi Naginsky defended himself, has recovered, and has become a model of resilience and hope for our community. The image that remains seared in my mind happened less than 24 hours later, the next morning on Brighton Common, in the exact spot of the stabbing. The green was packed with people from across the religious and political spectrum of our Jewish community, along with friends and allies. We gathered, we rallied in a powerful showing of solidarity, strength, and resistance. Every speaker with different words, but the same message. No, not here, not anywhere. We will not tolerate Jew hatred, anti-Semitic violence or rhetoric, demonization or vilification of Israel. We will not tolerate hatred, bigotry, or violence against anyone. That is not who we are, and we will not stand for it. As the rally went on, what had been a light rain turned to a downpour. Picture the crowd standing there in the pouring rain, hoods, umbrellas, the, the ground under our feet was soaked, but not a soul moved. All eyes were fixed on the stage with politicians and civic leaders and standing right next to me was a line of rabbis, several of whom spoke that morning with another powerful message. This rally, they told us, was not only about protection, solidarity, and defense. It was about light, love, and hope. That's why we are so relentlessly committed to the survival of the Jewish people, because we have a mission and a story 
to share with our children and with their children, with our friends and with the world, a message of goodness, compassion, and justice. That's our calling. That's our purpose. That's what we in this community have been doing together for over 125 years, and that's what we'll continue to do for generations to come. As I listened to those speakers and looked out at the crowd under their umbrellas with their signs now soaked with rain, I thought about a saying that a wise friend of mine loves to quote. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. I have faith in us and our future because our community is willing to stand shoulder to shoulder in the pouring rain because we already know how to dance in that rain. Resilience is one of the calling cards of the Jewish people and one of the reasons why we have endured for 3,000 years. And I get to see every day firsthand the resilience of this community that has enabled us not only to weather the past 20 months, but to get stronger. The resilience of synagogue leaders and community members who have doubled down on relationships and found new ways to create community, to pray, to celebrate, and to mourn in remote and hybrid environments. And they keep pushing forward because our Jewish life depends on them. The resilience of our Jewish day schools who hit remote learning out of the park, got our kids back to school last year, and this year opened with banner enrollment. Schools that put values, community, and children at the center of everything they do deliver an extraordinary education, no matter what the circumstances. The resilience of our human service organizations that have worked with CJP to deliver over 10,000 hot meals on the Jewish holidays to people in our community who need them most. Every day, they are literally saving lives, fighting economic vulnerability, combating social isolation, ensuring that our older generation can age with dignity. And as you heard earlier, I am so proud that with immense gratitude to Sydney and Deanna Wolk for a lead gift of over $2.3 million, we are launching a community-wide mental health initiative because our community can do better, ensuring that no individual or family needs to struggle alone. The resilience of our dynamic engagement organizations that are broadening and deepening connections to Jewish life, learning in Israel, especially for our next generation. That's why Boston sent 130 college students to Israel this summer to intern with Onward Israel, by far the most of any city in the country. And that's why we've partnered with Repair the World to launch a young adult service learning initiative right here in Boston. As you heard from Brenda and Leo a few minutes ago, for so many people in our community, being proud to be Jewish means both loving the Jewish people and feeling a sense of responsibility for the broader world. Back in August, as we watched with horror the events in Afghanistan unfolding, so many of you across this community from every religious and political background called CJP and asked, what, what is our community going to do? What can I do? Because we know too well what it feels like to flee from our homes only to have doors slammed in our faces. When we see others suffering in the ways that we as a people have suffered so many times throughout our history, we feel an obligation to treat our fellow human beings the way we ourselves would want to be treated. Thanks to the vision, leadership, and generosity of so many of you, we launched FAIR, our fund for Afghan immigrants and refugees. And I'm proud to say that already 650 donors have donated over $500,000. Look, I know there's so much we disagree about. I know that the polarization in this community and in this country can feel insurmountable. But I also know that we can, we must find common ground because we need one another and the world needs us. We will stand loud and proud to be Jewish, united 
in defense of our safety and our dignity. And we will stand loud and proud to be Jewish, united in our, com our compassion for human suffering anywhere and in our defense of human dignity everywhere. We will keep striving to be a community where everyone can be their authentic selves and feel a sense of belonging to a greater whole. A community that embraces and values diversity of expression and of thought and of identity because we know that we're stronger because of our diversity, not in spite of it. A community that comes together for shared experiences with shared purpose and in shared work, always putting one foot in front of the other, moving a few steps forward, lifting ourselves and those around us a little higher. What an awesome night of gratitude and celebration this has been. I'm so grateful to all of our award recipients. Thank you through what you do and more importantly, who you are. You model for all of us what it takes to build and sustain this vision of community. And I'm so grateful to be on this journey and doing this sacred work with all of you. There will be plenty of storms ahead. I look forward to dancing in the rain together. Thank you. Mark, I think there's one last thank you tonight, and that is to you. You are truly a blessing to our community. And on a personal level, it's such a blessing for me to get to work with you. Dancing in the rain, what a perfect metaphor for the incredible work of our community. So we're almost at our close. We've seen and heard a lot. It'd be great if you just take a second and put into chat, what did you hear tonight that inspired you? I could probably do a paragraph, but just put a phrase, pick what item, what did you hear tonight that inspired you? Um, thank you, Mark, for all of your words. Uh, it was so great to honor our volunteers, celebrate our staff, and truly really celebrate our community as a whole. Uh, I, for one, am very happy to be back here, and I'm truly inspired by what we can accomplish when we do it together. Great. Great. Uh, I, get to, I get to close the show out. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Shara and Becca. It was really an honor being here with you tonight live. Fun. It was fun. <laughs> we were going to be on Zoom, and we said, no way. We've got to be live. <laughs> thank you, Mark, for your awesome comments. Thank you to the entire staff here that made the, the evening possible. It's, it's not easy to put a show on tonight like it was put on uh, this evening. Uh, and uh, hopefully you heard that call to action, right? That as a community, we're stronger, right? Strength to strength. Make sure you reach out to the Jewish agencies and, and ask, how can we be helpful? What can we do? Because together we are in fact are a stronger community. Buenas noches, Laila Tovin. Good night. And Bashana Haba'a in person. Next year in person. <laughs> yes. See you then.